Welcome to Prime Time with Al Nguli. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are doing well. Hornbill talked to a leader of the Coordinating Committee on Manipur Integrity. And later, we also talked to a leader of the Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum the previous week. So uh, their statements did not indicate they were ready to move toward peace, considering what one of them said. The lines have been crossed and we will continue to fight. That was what one of the leaders said during the time. Yet regardless of who the victims or perpetrators are, both sides are hurting in Manipur. The riots and the arson have turned into outright bloodshed with atrocities and cold-blooded killing that spared neither the young nor the old in Manipur. Let's keep praying for the best for them and that a resolution will be found sooner. The big newsmaker from the previous week, though, was the rock slide at Chumukidima that killed two people and a few others injured. This has led to allegations and counter-allegations between the administration and the NHIDCL. We will be talking about this in a while in this program. Let's check out the top stories from the previous week. This news report indicated yet the birth of another Naga nationalist faction for the Naga people. I think it is about time we stop breeding nationalist groups. It is too many and too much now. The chairman of the NSCN, Yung Ang faction, Yung Ang, was reportedly deposed by a group of leaders from the organization itself during the previous week. A functionary of the organization called Ang Mai was elected as its new chairman after reportedly deposing of Yong Ang. A press release from the group earlier had said a meeting of the organization's leaders on April 10th deposed Yong Ang as chairman. The move was allegedly for uh, what a press statement we received here called anti-national and anti-party activities. The statement said both civil and military officials of the group uh, had elected Ang Mai, who is said to be a retired personal aide of the NSNK founder SS Kaplang. The mighty Nationalist Congress Party in Maharashtra is facing its biggest challenge yet. In a shock development that has sent ripples across the national political circles, NCB leader Ajit Pawar joined the BJP-led government in Maharashtra. He was backed by several MLAs. He took oath as the state's deputy chief minister in the Eknath Shinde-led government. This story is straight out from the land of Mahatma Gandhi and the land of democracy. A man in Madhya Pradesh, allegedly a worker of the BJP, was filmed smoking and urinating on the face of a tribal person called Dashmat Rawat. The video continues to be viral on social media while also triggering widespread condemnation across India. In response to the act, the Madhya Pradesh government on Wednesday bulldozed the property of Pravesh Shukla, the man who was shown urinating on the tribal boy. The property was bulldozed as it was an encouragement. Uh, later on, Chief Minister Shivraj Jawan ordered action against the offender. After this, the Madhya Pradesh police brought the accused into police custody. But there's a lot of drama behind this. It is interesting how politics works in, uh, in India. The man, who is alleged to be a BJP worker himself, was brought into the police station walking in like he was an Ajay Devgan in one of those Bollywood movies. He did not look like an offender being brought in by the police to be punished. If you didn't know better, you'd have thought he was an important person walking into the police station surrounded by police bodyguards. It looked like the police were actually welcoming him, ushering him gently and solemnly into the police station like he was some big shot, like a VIP. If you look at the videos, then you will know what I'm talking about. But here, this man was a man who urinated on another human being, and he was in police custody. So after facing criticism at the way the police were handling him, the Madhya Pradesh police uh, perhaps decided to get a little rougher uh, with him this time. Later on, visuals emerged showing the police 
pulling and pushing Barbez Shukla as they took him away, this time a little more tougher. You can even see the police give him a slap or two in the back just to add to the drama on Thursday, July 6. You can check it out on YouTube, it'll be there. So there was more drama again. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Jawan on Thursday washed the feet of that poor man, Dashmat Rawat, the tribal, tribal man who was urinated upon by Shukla. In the video shared by ANI, the Chief Minister is seeing sat on a stool on the floor while the tri uh, tribal man sits on a chair with his feet in a water basin. Jahan then washes the tribal man's feet besides garlanding him and wrapping a white cloth around that man. The chief minister then fed him and posed for the cameras, of course. He reportedly claimed to have said that the poor and the people are like God to him. So there are two take away from this report, ladies and gentlemen. We all wish that majority communities in India would do this for every social and religious minority person suffering in the country. Second, have you ever noticed that in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, every time properties of criminals are bulldozed by the authorities for alleged wrongdoing, it is always on the pretext of that property being illegal. So what were the government doing all this while before crimes were committed? And only after a person is uh, caught for crime or accused for crime, then suddenly everyone decides that their property is illegal. I'm not saying crime should be uh, condoned, criminals should be condoned. What I'm saying is every time someone gets arrested and they're accused of a wrongdoing, only later it emerges that their properties were illegal, their land were encroached, or they stole a property, you know. So I think um, these are things that we need to keep in mind when enforcement action takes place in the country. Let's check out the next newsmaker from the previous week. This was the biggest newsmaker then, and the events surrounding this particular incident continues to be in the thoughts and conversations of the people of Nagaland, especially to Mukidima in the Dimapur areas. On July 4th, Two persons died and several were injured when rocks rolled down on their vehicles from a hill along National Highway 29 between Chumukidima and Kukitolong. The matter took a combative turn when the National Highway and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited issued a statement following the incident. The corporation said clearance of a mud slide nearby was underway for which vehicles were waiting when the rocks fell. The statement of the corporation said it ensured swift action. They also pressed in machinery, manpower and ambulance services which reached the area 15 minutes and immediate medical assistance was provided to the affected there. Uh, the Dimapur Kohima Road National Highway 29 was handed over to the NHIDCL from the Border Roads Organization in 2016 for development. The corporation said various special slope protection measures, including slope stabilization measures, were done at a portion where the accident took place. The point where the rock fell has been stable since 2000, uh, 2019 and 2020. The corporation also said there was slope protection work of up to 30 to 35 meters at some points along that area. So this statement erupted into allegations that the corporate, uh, corporation was not being accurate in its claims and statements. The district administration of Chumugidima refused the contentions made by the NHIDCL in regard to the various possible reasons that led to the rocks falling on July 4th that killed two and injured three others. The corporation isn't uh, exactly a paragon of virtue, considering it continues to be in the news for one reason or the other, including corruption charges against one of its officials in Mochong earlier. If you remember, uh, I think the video was on Facebook where an official of the corporation was allegedly uh, asking for bribes from a contractor. 
uh, the Nagaland Pollution Board had also warned of falling rocks and the dangers along the route um, there where the where the where the accident happened. It seems the corporation has failed to submit its reports to. In a 2021 letter, the, pol the Pollution Board of Nagaland referred to a similar incident where people were injured and four vehicles were damaged. The board asked the NHIDCL to submit a report on the measures being taken to tackle the frequent reoccurrence of the rock slides. The company has not submitted the DPR or action plan to the Nagaland Pollution Board, the Pollution Board stated earlier. Similarly, following the July 4th incident that killed two and injured several others, the Chumugirima District Administration reacted sharply to the claims of the NHIDCL. Uh, the administration issued a statement right after saying that the administration had conducted a survey in the month of March and was not satisfied by the safety measures that was reportedly undertaken by the NHIDCL. The administration had also requested the corporation to submit technical details, but again this time too was denied the information. This allegation is similar to the one made by the Nagaland Pollution Board who said that the corporation failed to submit its action plans and details in regard to the work along the site of the accident. The administration also said that unlike the claims, there were no slope protection mechanisms at the location of the accident. This is in reply to the corporation's claims. The administration said that the reason for the traffic jam could well be due to a heavy mud fall at another location which had been unattended or which had been left unattended for a long time. So due to this, travelers were diverted to the other land which caused a standstill for the traffic during that time. The Chumugitima administration stated further that no machinery was found at kilometer 124.500 as late as 18.59 hours on July 4 and none was there till about 9 a.m. the next day, that is July 5th. The administration also stated that the claims made in the press release of the corporation might not be accurate and had repeatedly refuted the claims of the corporation as information that needs to be rechecked or that they might not be accurate uh, information in the first place. Uh, my former editor at the Morong Express, uh, Along Longcomer, has also warned in the past about the threat the highway posed to the people and property. The Pollution Board had also warned of it similarly. This is not the first time the corporation has been in the news. In 2022, the media reported top officials of the corporation had resigned over issues re uh, related to land compensation, differences with PWD officials, particularly over construction of RCC drains, and issues of fatal incidents on the Likru Quarry Bridge, and also the incomplete. Uh, Irang Bailey Bridge. A year old Bailey Bridge laid over Irang River was swept away after heavy rains. Further, when three trucks slipped downhill at Likru Kori Bridge, located between Makan and Ch uh, Chakumai in Senapati district, in succession within a month's time, there were allegations that the corporation was slow to react in taking up corrective measures to prevent further accidents. After the works minister Govindas inspected the site, the corporation started taking up short-term measures such as implementation of signages, railings, speed breakers and rumble strips among other measures to prevent accidents at the Likru Kori Bridge. He alleged that the NHI, NHIDCL was attempting to speed up construction in order to get their finance bill faster without even considering whether the construction may affect the people or not in the future. In Nagaland, an NHIDCL official in Mochong was also accused of demanding 
bribe from a contractor earlier. I think you remember this report. I read a report from our friends at the Morong Express also related to the Chumugidima incident. The Morong Express quoted an official of the corporation. This is the quote from the report. Hitting back at the allegations made against the company, the NHIDCL ED Ritan Kumar Singh questioned how many roads in Nagaland have got safety features like we have here? Right then, this is a question for the official. If NHIDCL roads have safety features like no other roads in Nagaland have, why did it kill those two citizens? I believe that the government should be launching an investigate, investigation at this point already and hold those accountable and fix responsibility to ensure that our highway is safe for people in the future. We'd like to know what your thoughts are in regard to the issue that is associated with the accident in Chumugidima, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any comments, opinions, insights to share, go to our social media sites and leave your comments there. Those were the top newsmakers from the previous week. We'll be bringing you more news later on. Keep watching Hornbill TV. I'm Alan Lee. See you next time.